All right. Welcome to Dragonworks. 1981 Honda GL 1100. It's in for some carburetor work. I'll get you some better video. I'm cramped in here right now. Uh, I was going to fire this thing up here for you so you could hear it. And uh, the battery's low, so I'm charging it up. So I'm just doing a little introductory video. And we'll go over a couple things while we wait for the battery. Um, anyway, the guy originally called me about can I synchronize the carburetors because him and his uh, friend or family or somebody rebuilt them. And then he sent them to a oh-so-familiar shop. It sat there for six months and they didn't touch it or whatever. Uh, that's the story I got. And he finally went and picked it up and he brought it over here for an adjustment. And of course, the day he came, the battery was charged up. We did a compression test, kind of low on some of the cylinders. And uh, it, it wouldn't stay running unless you had it choked. So I told him that it's more than adjustment. The carburetors are probably choked up or they're just messed up on the inside. Something's not right. Um, one thing I did notice after he left, see that screw right there? Yeah, that's it's in there all crooked and it's not tightened. And that's the cap, vacuum cap for your slide that goes up and down. These don't have diaphragms. You'll see they got little aluminum uh, cylinders and that's got to have a really good vacuum. So that's got to be sealed tight and that definitely is not going to seal it tight. So there's number one issue. Got to get that hole probably drilled and tapped out. But anyway, I'm going to fire it up and we'll see how it's running. I'll pull the carbs off, clean them up, rebuild them, put them back on, and then we'll see, see it run like it's supposed to. Um, that's it for right now. There's some other issues with it, but we're just, you know, like most people, <laughs> let's, let's cover one thing at a time and see where we're at and then go from there. So that's, that's what's happening. Uh, he did replace the fuel pump on it. That's usually a problem with these. And, uh, you can see where things have been leaking for years and years. So, uh, anyway, you got that taken care of. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's fire this thing up and see where we're at with it. Wow, started quick.
what we're working with. It is a mess. Um, yeah, it's more than just dirty carbs. You see that one? I think we got some float problems and some other stuff here. But anyway, I just wanted to see how it was running before I started and also show you guys. So, yeah, now I got to get in, dig in there and get them carbs off and rebuild them. Okay, stand by. Okay, so I guess that screw that we found on the other side that's crooked would be problem number one. And problem number two would be that I'm starting to remove these carburetors here and I pulled off my first intake and there's no O-ring in there. See that groove? There's supposed to be an O-ring in that groove. Um, so then I look down in there, make sure it's not down in there or something, like maybe they dropped it. And uh, let's see if I can do this. Hang on. I'm going to have to zoom in. Looks to me like there's some uh, RTV silicone down in there. I'm almost certain I'm going to dig it out and find out here in a second. Let me see if I can get the light on that thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, there we go. A little bit. Oh, I'm getting closer. There's all kinds of stuff stuck on the valve. There it is. You can see down in there to the right. Sorry, the lighting is terrible. I'm trying to get it on there for you. Here, let me see. Let's do it like this. It's just a hard spot. Oh, you almost saw it. <laughs> Come on, it's trying to focus on the outside. There you go. There's a whole bunch of that. It's really hard to see there. Oh, oh, it's getting a little better. Can't quite get it to come in. So I guess right in the center of your screen right now, you can kind of see it's orange, it's brown. It is all around the valve, both sides, and there's some stuff. There we go. Oh, <laughs> I love this automatic focus. You saw it that time, though. There you go. Look at all that. And there's a bunch of it stuck to the valve. All right, I'm going to dig a little out. Stand by. Okay, well, that didn't work out quite the way I thought because when I pulled it up through all that varnish, it turned all brown. It's hard as a rock, but that's what it looks like. Some kind of sealer. Um, you can barely see the orange now, only when I get a certain angle. Anyway, I'm not really sure. There's a bunch of stuff down in there, um, but there certainly is no O-ring where there's supposed to be, and that's only the first one. So let me see what else I find here as I go. It's always a mystery, folks. Yeah, I need an estimate on a little carb tuning. Okay, guys. Well, the rest of the intakes had the O-rings in them, but the O-rings look like the original. I mean, they are shot. Anytime they're lower than the metal surface, they're not doing anything. And I took a couple pictures. I'll flash up on the screen before I start it. Uh, you could see around the edges where it was sucking air in for a long time it's a telltale sign so we had some serious intake leaks here this thing's was running super lean except for the fact that it's dumping so much fuel in it um look inside this carburetor so this guy uh <clears throat> this customer here he rebuilt these carbs a while back and then like i say it sat at a shop for six months i i don't know what the heck happened here this thing looks like it was completely filled up with something um i don't know if that's all gas it looks a little rusty on them screws down there it almost looks like water unless the gas had water in it um this one ain't looking a whole lot better but uh somewhat better i don't know what i'm gonna find when i get in here all right so uh anyway that's where we're at they're still on i'm getting ready to pull them off of here and we'll get a real good look at them all right, let's have a look at what we're working with here. So, once again, the story goes, these were rebuilt, cleaned and rebuilt, and then they sat in another shop for six months. So, uh, like I say, customer just wanted a adjustment or a syn synchronization or something. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> uh, the first step in cleaning carburetors is to clean the carburetors.
Okay. <laughs> this side doesn't look that bad inside, right? That's that's kind of what it's supposed to look like right there. See how shiny that butterfly is back in there and the screws are. Let's look at its counterpart, shall we? Wow. Yeah, so um, this thing was not going to run right. And I have no idea what the inside is going to look like. We're about to see it. And let's see, where's our screw at? Yeah, this side. And here's that screw that I pointed out earlier. Let's turn it on here so you can see what we got going on here. So, yeah, that thing's in there crooked as all get out. I haven't messed with it at all. I'm going to clean these up here real quick on the outside. Get that grime off of them the best I can before I bust them open. But, uh, yeah, a little bit dirty. Okay, what seems to be many hours later. I uh, finally got the big stuff knocked off here. That's, that's about all I'm going to be doing. Um, you definitely don't want to open up the inside of a carburetor with all that dirt and sludge on the outside. Um, sure enough, it's going to get in there when you're trying to get these things put back together. And when you're trying to clean it, all that stuff's going to be running down in your new uh, gaskets and everything. So anyway, like I say, knocked off the big stuff. And let's see, which end? Yeah, here's those ends that were all cruddy. Uh, this one's going to be a little discolored there. But no harm. Just basically cosmetic. So, yeah, like I say, just a quick. Now, I don't, I don't go any further than this, this unless customer wants to pay to uh, polish them or something like that. That's about it on the outside. But see the difference. So that's how you start out. And let me get these things busted apart here, and we'll see what we got. Okay, here's what I'm dealing with. Not super terrible but also not super good, definitely not clean. And some of the stuff in here kind of makes me worry about the fuel tank itself. Um, from my experience, they get pretty bad. Yeah, the pilot jets are definitely clogged up. Um, I got them soaking right now, getting ready to yank them out of there. Uh, again, not super, super dirty, but not clean by any means. And all these jets are clogged up still. So I'm definitely going to have to be replaced. Uh, you would normally clean them, but the kits I get, um, the ones that I buy come with all new jets and everything in them. If they fit, sometimes they don't. Because different years, like these 81s, aren't the same as 82, 83. Um, so anyway... Just real quick, just wanted to show you what I'm dealing with. Like I say, not real, real bad, but that is a lot of stuff down in there. Looks like a little rusty, crusty to me. Um, I got a feeling this tank is bad. Woo! There we go. Sorry about the extreme close-up, guys. <laughs> All right. I got to get to work. Okay, guys, got them all cleaned up now. New parts on the inside. I got gas sitting here in them. Um, looking for any kind of leaks or anything. Nothing so far except where I spilled it just now <laughs> when it overfilled. But, yeah, anyway, just checking for leaks. Um, just wait here a few minutes and make sure that everything's cool. And then I'll get them put back on the bike. I uh, found a lot of problems with these things. Uh, all the sink screws were all cranked down. Uh, I was holding the butterflies wide open. Uh, you remember that one screw uh, that was messed up? I got that fixed. All the needle jets or um, all the idle mixture needles all had double wash uh, O-rings on them. So nobody took the O-rings out. Oh my goodness, the list goes on and on and on and on. I'll think of more. I'll talk about it in the end. But uh, yeah, got them all cleaned up. Like I say, just sitting here waiting for uh, 
make sure there's no leaks or anything like that. So, okay, guys.
baby. That's all there is to it. Um, yeah, I'm so damn good that I forgot to turn the gas on. <laughs> Some of you might have thought that. Um, the tank is, I'm getting ready to show you, the tank's really dirty. Uh, I knew that without even looking when I saw the inside of these carburetors. Um, so I put on a fuel filter, obviously. It's always a good idea. There was none. And uh, I had shut that fuel off. <laughs> so I wasn't looking at the filter on. And of course, uh, forgot to turn that back on. <laughs> even though it seemed like it was running good, it wasn't even running good yet. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I am human. I do make some mistakes every now and then. Hey, but anyway, so yeah, you know, they got me tuning this thing up here. People want it running perfect. It ain't got any exhaust on it. So that's a little bit tough to, to do that. But um, do you remember what it ran like <laughs> when I got it in here? Uh, also, I don't even have the air box back on it or the air cleaner. So it'll run even better with that stuff because it likes a little bit of a restriction there. Um, but that may have helped with the open exhaust. Of course, the jetting wouldn't be proper. But blah, 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 I'm just rambling on to you guys. Anyway, I just got these carbs back together and on here. Uh, let me get my light. Oh, man. I don't even want to say how busy I am because you guys are so sick of hearing it. I've got the, they say the best problem in the world, but I'm not so sure about that. I think I got to start rethinking what I'm doing here. Maybe start specializing in some stuff because just doing everything. Well, there's the neck of it. You can see that part. That's always rusty. Let me see if I can even... Hold on, guys. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. Hang on one second. Mm-hmm. Bear with me. Now, I might have to get a different light for you and show you another time. But uh, take my word for it. Most of the tank looks just like that neck right there. Um, I don't want to waste my time trying to show you that because I know you trust me. Uh, if you've been hanging around any time, you know that uh, you can believe what I say. Um, so anyway, yeah, they were just full of crap. You saw the videos. You might have saw the pictures. I'll try to flash stuff up because i just been taking some pictures here and there as I worked on it and a couple little videos. Um, this is when you, when you work on a, a grungy... Goldwing set of carburetors. It's like going to battle. So it's been a heck of a couple days here um, I started on it yesterday afternoon finished up today and it's a little after lunch. So um, quite a bit of work involved also uh, I might have showed this might not um, The o-rings were shot and there was one missing on the other side um, I may have already said this or may repeat myself. Of course the floats were way off all of them, uh, the idle mixture screws. Somebody took them out once upon a time because they had double O-rings inside of them, but it didn't look like they were out any time recent. Of course, the emulsion tubes, pilot jets, all the jets were clogged back up and everything. So uh, uh, I don't know how it's gonna respond until I get the air box back on. It seemed like when I started cracking the throttle, it was a little bit lean, so it'll like the air filter and everything back on it. Um, but again, it's kind of hard to tune without exhaust system on there. So I can get it close, you know, and then we'll go from there. And uh, just a little quick disclaimer, anything I say about this bike or carbs or anything is not directed at this owner. It's in general. I try to generalize things because I get stuff all the time. Um, and again, not this guy, really nice customer. But people are always saying, oh, I already, you don't have to worry about cleaning the carbs. I already did that. I just need you to adjust them. How much? And then I get in here and I see, I get the bike in here and I see what's going on. And you saw them. And uh, that's how this thing started out. And it's, you know, no fault of this guy. He doesn't know. He's not a motorcycle mechanic. But there was a lot of things. Um, all the synchronizing screws, I'll, I'll show you. These were all every which way. And the throttle was basically half open. Um, to begin with, and uh, I could just go on and on about it, but that's what I'm here for, folks, to help you out. Um, good thing I know about this stuff because I'm looking out for it. I know what to expect, and uh, I can get it taken care of. So anyway, 
Uh, this is going to be a long enough video as it is because I don't know how many parts I recorded that I got to splice together. But uh, uh, let's see something here. This is usually a little nice little test. Yeah, also, uh, I'm a little low on my idle. Also, this place got 66,000 miles on it. I gotta turn that idle up. Hang on. guys so anyway like i was saying this video is getting a little bit long here so yeah i just this is what i usually do um uh, you probably saw in the last video once again i forget how many videos i took and clipped together in the last couple days but i first tested the carbs on the bench uh, to make sure they wouldn't leak and then i got them on here and this is the initial startup you saw it that was it um i forgot to turn the fuel on <laughs> you might have caught that um, because like I said, I was putting that filter on, I had to shut the fuel off, uh, and pull the line off of the pump. And, uh, when I started the bike up, I for totally forgot that I'd left that off. So it ran much better with the fuel turned on, but anyway, it looks good. Now I can button it up and maybe I'll do another video here in the end with, uh, everything back together. All right, guys, thanks so much for following along and, and staying with me here. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll do an ending. I'm actually surprised it runs as good as it does uh, with all the things that I found. Um, plus the thing, uh, like I say, it's got 66,000 miles on it. And uh, when we did a compression test there, it's a little low. One of them, I believe, was way off if I remember right. Uh, I did it when the customer brought it and show him. Because like I've mentioned a million times, the, the vacuum um, caused by the engine is what runs the carburetors as it's sucking air in the intake it draws it draws air across this carburetor sucking the fuel out of the bottom so if your engine's not working good your carbs aren't going to be working good i can rebuild them and spec them out perfect adjust them perfect but if the motor's not perfect that's how it's going to run simple as that i'm not a magician i'm just a mechanic uh, like I said, we got 66,000 here. You guys saw that before. But anyway, super. I just took it for a ride. I wish I could have filmed that. I just don't have time to get everything set up, guys. Sorry about that. But she does rip. Little hesitation uh, off idle, but after that, she just rips. It wants to bust the tire loose. I think he's going to be real happy. Uh, like I say, it sat in another shop for over six months. Uh, he tried to work on it himself, had a mess. It, you saw how it was. It wasn't even hardly run, um, but there was so much stuff. <laughs> I mean, everything that can be wrong with carburetors was wrong. Uh, the intake, uh, like I said, I mentioned this on the other one, the O-rings were shot. One of them was missing, on and on and on. Screws not tight. 
the needles weren't uh, inside of these carburetors. The needles are actually screwed down in the slide. One of them was unscrewed and the needle was flopping around. The other one was loose. Um, so the needle was just partially working. I could go on all day. Um, but again, nothing towards this bike or the, or the owner. This is just explaining, you know, my daily routine and basically what I go through. Um, and, and I use this as an example. Once again, nothing against this customer or the bike, but I get a lot of people that say, all I need is an adjustment. You know, don't try to sell me a carb cleaning or a rebuild. <laughs> you know, I get it all the time. And all I'm trying to do is help people get their bikes running right because I know what it actually takes. And like I said, the carburetors will only work as good as the engine. So if the engine's not performing 100%, then either are the carburetors. Okay, guys, uh, this video is long enough. I hope you enjoyed the uh, journey. And uh, it's time to call the customer and let him know it's ready. If you need something done, hit me up. Peace out.